Hey everybody, it's Bus, continuing our playthrough of the Path of Champions. Today, we're taking on the one and a half star quest, the Saltwater Scourge, going up to battle against Gangplank with our one star Aatrox. To get you familiar with our Aatrox, that one star power gives us whenever an equipped ally strikes, you reduce the cost of a random card in your hand by one. This is the big build around aspect of our deck that lets us play uh, expensive cards like Aatrox and so many of these games end uh, so quickly. And so with these strikes uh, coming in, gives us the opportunity to play the big expensive cards. We've made our way up to champion level 5, almost to that point where we get the rare relic, but right now we only get the common, in which point we're using the armadillo shell. This lets us hopefully uh, get in multiple strikes with the Aatrox flip card, so if we have the Deathbringer strike in our hand, uh, we then the, the tough and the bonus health should hopefully let us chain off uh, the second one and the third one without our Aatrox dying. And so, that's our deck. That's what we're doing battle with today. Let's head on into the Gangplank. Get started with the battles. Alright. The Saltwater, the Scourge, the Swain in the middle. Everything one could want on a Path of Champions battle. So, on to the powers. What do we got here? Enfeebling Strike, uh, I never like. This is just such a, a weak ability I don't really want. Fast Deal is always useful. There's nothing wrong with drawing cards, but it doesn't do anything to, to build around with what we're trying to do with our deck. And then Disarmed could be okay. It's what we're going to go for here uh, as we're trying to get our cheap units into combat so that they get those strikes and they get the cost reductions on the World uh, Bringer and everything. Uh, opponents having minus one attack should make our units then more resilient. That's the one I'm going to go for here. So, on to battle with the Jagged Taskmaster. When the foe attacks, he gives all of his one cost units plus one attack. Right. Good stuff. Maybe they'll drop a Powder Pandemonium out here. Who knows? <laughs> but here, I'm going to look for some cheaper cards. I think we can hang on to keep her in the box just because it's so strong, but we need an equipment to go along with this. This is the big uh, deck building hurdle that we run into with this deck is getting a good mix of early game plays with equipment to attach to our unit and then uh, ensuring that we have a decent curve and some interactivity. A lot that we're actually going for there. So here, we'll pick up the Darkened Staff. Uh, it's a uh, a nice cheap way to get additional spell mana uh, replaces itself quickly in terms of mana cost. Very efficient and effective. I think we're going to wait on it, though. Let's drop the Darkened Aegeus. Uh, I worry that if we uh, land the Darkened Staff, that opponent's just going to play a unit that, that takes ours down in combat. Maybe we, we should have been protected enough since we do have the Disarm, but if we come down and make a trade on the first turn, that's going to make me... Uh, make me feel like we're kind of lacking in terms of what uh, uh, the, the safety of our units and what we can use to build up the board. All right, though. Well, opponent, opponent apparently wants us to get this Aatrox on board, so that's what we're going to do. It only costs four. Going to repair some of this incidental damage that we took. Let's see if we can't come in and close out the game here. Not quite. One short. We're getting close, though. Alright, free dude. Next turn. Let's strike a Matrox. Let's get to bringing the booms in here. Poor guy. The, the bubble bear didn't even have a chance. More strikes. All right, and then we'll we'll play the world ender on this upcoming turn, just in case you aren't familiar with seeing the uh, the Aatrox flip happen. We'll be the we'll be the first, you know, number number one coming at you here. <laughs> I love it. I, I love the 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 skit on. I guess it's not a skit. It's a comic on XKCD. Uh, the the lucky ten thousand. Just about uh, saying things that everyone in the world should already know. It's, uh, it's going on to say that uh, there's a there's a good chance that there's a you know a one in ten thousand chance that uh, something that everyone in the world knows doesn't actually know it, and so giving people the opportunity to see pop see the the Mentos or see the Pop Rocks in the Coke for the first time, <laughs> magical moment. 
one of today's lucky 10,000. And so just in case one of today's lucky 10,000 on the Aatrox Flipper out there today, we got that in there for you. Okay, so reasonably terrible set of uh, equipment here. I don't really like the Dark and Halberd uh, coming out of these. Uh, uh, you know, it's just we, we don't have the incidental units on board to sacrifice to this, and it just doesn't really play to the themes outside of being an equipment. So we don't want that. These other cards are too expensive. Let's just go ahead and take a reroll. All right. I, I do like the idea of more Dark and Stabs, but I'm actually going to go with the Mobilize here. Uh, just try and make everything super cheap, see if we can't dump out our hand as quickly as possible. Uh, onto this next set, reasonable set of units down here with Annie. Excuse me, just a bunch of really cheap units, which is what we're typically looking for. Uh, the Fiora end of the spectrum is just a little bit too expensive, and we're not going to have any uh, combos with Ziggs, and I don't feel like we really need the value uh, that comes out of the Bomber Twins and the Unraveled Earth, so we'll pick up the Annie. See if we can't get her turbocharged with a bit of, uh, turbocharged with a bit of equipment. So here, we're going to want to go to the champion item chest. I still like to level up Aatrox with the additional items, and I don't think that this is a, uh, a deck archetype to where we need to just run to the healer, right? We do have some bad cards in here, like the Violent Discord, but uh, I think just having a couple of copies of a bad card uh, isn't you know, quite a necessity to run towards the healer. So we'll go towards the champion item chest. So we can battle either one, the Kato Shiraza combo, or we can battle the, uh, the Jagged Butcher, the Jagged Butcher is probably the easier one. Uh, I, I feel like Aatrox is just going to be quite strong against any go-wide strategy. And then we also have like a bunch of two fours for one mana, right? I think we can, we can come in here and battle this thing pretty quickly. We'll hang on to everything. We can almost drop our entire hand on the second turn. And so see if opponent plays into that for us. Oh. Well, I'm, 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 I'm balking at the idea. Let's drop the staff. The mobilize isn't going to hit. Alright, still get a pretty good combat, though. Give us a, a spell mana discount. Give a card in our hand the discount. Get us a little closer to dropping everything. All right, there's the there's the mobilize everybody was hoping for. All right, we need some stuff to do. We need some Aatroxes to draw today. Might as well just go ahead and attack, I think. Just a adding a violent discord to kill one of these units just gives the opponent the opportunity to add another unit to the board. So we'll probably just fall behind it. Can't quite strike down the Abyssal Guard. Got a little bit too much health on him, but I think we're, we're still going to be fine on the turn. We'll find Aatrox in here. Nope. The Dark and Aegeus is at least, at least kind of meaty, you know? I like my cards to be a little, a little meatier. <laughs> Alright, but this game's done. We'll get this one won on the open attack next turn let's take it uh, th this lets us come back to full health next turn when we take that one point of damage from the nexus ability and then we'll strike it back with the keeper of the box so get out of here with full health please g g All right, post-battle spoils, what do we got? Nothing too impressive. Let's put the, the Oracle's Lens on the Furious Wielder, as that's kind of like the last card that's typically in our hand. Uh, having the Predict to follow up with that seems like it could be kind of strong, just to, you know, if we need to try and guarantee that we're picking up a late-game play. Now adding uh, Challenger onto Aatrox seems reasonable. He's a big com combat monster now. And then up to the next set, we either have a Smooth Soloist. This lets you uh, buy a power, a shop, or... A slot bot and i think if we're going to be buying powers right we'll probably just head to the shop i guess you get your choice of three with the soloist but only one at the shop but then we get to shop for the cards as well and so for shopping let's do the shop right shop 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 head up into the middle and so uh, i don't 
think we want to battle the Legion Marauder. What was this other one? The foe summons a monkey idol at game start. Monkey idol seems a little bit weaker to me. Okay. So what do we got? Nice little early start. I had such like high hopes for this mobilize, but I don't think we're ever going to use it. <laughs> it's just everything's already so cheap anyways. Like we, we have the dream of just playing a bunch of stuff for free, but uh, it, it kind of feels like um, uh, we don't have like the card draw to go along with it or just to, you know, it just doesn't feel like we're ever going to use it. And then this Darken Staff kind of sucks with Annie. <laughs> I didn't even stop to think about that, but if she fireballs down the unit, then she's not going to strike and give us the impact. She's not going to give us the... Uh, she, she's not going to give us the, uh, the... the strike ability for the extra mana. Maybe that's why we don't play a bunch of uh, Darken equipment with Annie. <laughs> that's okay, though. reasonable board taking a bit of incidental damage but nothing to worry about all right tough bro ready to block the monkey that does give us back a, a piece of spell mana which is kind of nice we can look to furious wield or something down now take that keeper of the box just uh, another Another bit of life steal. All right. Well, the the cards are going to land onto Aatrox at some point. He's going to get cheap before the day's done. All right. Opponent plays a card we don't care about. Now it's time for battle. The the fearsome is kind of you know double good with that disarm ability that we took the opponent. Uh, Having a bit of challenge coming in and blocking our fearsomes. Not bad. Alright, well this one should be over fairly quickly now. About to have a big board. We don't have any overwhelms, so I guess opponent does have some opportunity to get a bunch of big boys on board, but... Yeah, we're not we're not really struggling here today. Might get that world ender online though. Y'all wanna go for that? You want us to do the world ender again? I bet I could arrange it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Here it is. Give me some of them Aatrox flips. Now we have that big overwhelm we needed. Alright, here they come, dude. Even getting the Tibbers out here. Did not expect that. Boomed him. Neg 19 into 7. GG Monkey Idol. Okay. Finally, I am freed of this madness. All right, what do we got here? More mobilizes? Just, just what we didn't need. I'm going for it. Now, if we come up to a uh, the healer, we can just cut the mobilize out of our deck. So it's like we didn't really add anything to our deck here. Now we have a shop or a slot bot. Slot bot lets you buy more rerolls, which we don't need. So let's head on into the shop. Uh, the Blade's Edge, not really interested in. The cards in hand. There's a Darken Ballista. We can definitely use that. And under, you know, if we needed a unit, we could look to pick up the, the Night Ranger Defector. These scouts are quite good. They tie in with a lot of our uh, strike abilities. Since it has scout, we get to hit twice, get the cost reduction twice. If we give it a uh, 
Darkened Staff, that's kind of like a four mana return on a single turn, but I think our deck is good enough as it is. We don't need that punch. We just have all those Aatroxes, and so we'll skip over that one. Into the healer, cutting a card. Where are you at? Mobilize. Rip. And on to Swain. So at the round start, you deal one damage to all the player's damaged units. All right, whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> I guess I guess we needed an update real bad. Real bad before the Swain battle. All right, off we go. Okay. Hang on to the equipment. Look for another one. We, we picked up a lot more equipment since we just got an additional three with the Darkened Ballistas we added, but it's probably still safe to hang on to one. Not a particularly strong start, though. There's a dude. There's a dude ready for battle. Not sure why opponent didn't attack there, but not complaining. Ooh, this guy has fearsome. Never mind. I, I thought this was going to be a bad open, but... Whoa. What is going on with your day, Swain? <laughs> this is, does not seem that good. Alright, load up the Aegeus onto our lifesteal unit. Now we can Furious Wielder based off of the, the Keeper of the Box. Get a little bit of that lifesteal action uh, as we are... Uh, getting the additional strikes in. Not bad, not bad. God, this unit's just so bad. <laughs> it's like, we, we have the, it's like I start to see, it's like, okay, what's the biggest, the biggest health you have? That's five on the City Breaker. We can hit it with five with Keeper of the Box. Cool, but it's like, these cards are all just so bad. <laughs> like, I, I don't feel like we need to, to even bother with it. I'm not going to get a lethal this turn, but... It's a, it's a it's a sad day for opponent when they don't even want to to strike down their units because they're so bad. All right, there's Swain though. Swain's not that bad. He's gonna get double struck though. Is, he, is that where we're gonna go? It's not enough for a lethal on him. It's a bit unfortunate. Yeah, it is. It's ten. It's a it's a ten hit. Let's wait till he gets in combat before we do it though. Oh, you just want to see Aatrox instead? Is that what you want, my dude? Alright. He's ready. I guess we have to worry a little bit with this Swain flip. I don't want him out here just striking our back or stunning our back line, like how Aatrox just got stunned right here. I thought we might be able to end the game this turn, but it's looking like that might be a little bit too far away. All right, fine, dude. What do we got? Dark and Ballista. I guess we're gonna predict again, so it's not that big of a deal. We can skip this one. Take the Ballista, then we're we're really close to popping off some World Enders. Once that happens, uh, the game should be done. Hey, okay, R.I.P. Swain. He's got a fresh one. Uh, that's kind of lame. Alright, whatever, dude. <laughs> that's the that's the proper response whenever something happens that you don't want to have happen, right? Yeah, whatever. Big lame-o. Captain Farron's a little scary. Man, and like Swain overwhelms and stuff? Is he just going to kill us? Uh, this is a little more problematic than I thought it was going to be. A little bit more. Which which Darken would we rather have? The, the Naganika? He's going to have 8 attack and then be able to take down Captain Farron. I think that's reasonable. The other thing I guess we could look to do is we can pop the uh, 
the the thing off of uh, the darkened blade we can pop it off of atrox put the darkened blade onto the bakai and then get two uh atrox for next turn maybe that's the way we go about it i think i'm on board with this then we can try we just need one atrox overwhelm to end the game because we know we have that uh, strike on top of our deck so we can strike whatever unit he has and then uh, get the full amount of overwhelm damage in neat little trick with the uh with the atrox if you're not familiar with that double love or the the darkened blade causing the assimilate he got stuns on both though <sighs> this game's stupid <laughs> this game this game's dumb all right, maybe this guy's enough. This is starting to be scary. Let's just get this dumb Swain off of the board. Is he just going to immediately replay another one? That's going to be so annoying. I was hoping we might find a world to where we could pick up enough... Uh, impact on Bala Cucks to, to get the kill, but that's not going to happen here either. What? Having two Aatroxes on the board does make it quite easy to uh, to pick up quite a bit of uh, Darkens, since it makes them both cost three less. Leave our big one back. Just to... If he does attack with Captain Farron next turn, if something weird happens with our Aatroxes, we'll at least have the big stats to come in and block with. This has gone... This has gone way nastier than expected. I did not expect this game to be going this long with our gigantic board, but those those Swain stuns were causing some real issues. All right, we're good now. We are good now. Get those 10 mana decimates. No thanks. All right, so oof. a little a little longer than expected, but victory nonetheless. Moving on, moving up, moving forward, moving sideways. All the directions one could need. We'll make it through. All right, so more Aatroxes and a spell shield. Sounds good. Into the next space. What will the powers be? All right, game start, draw two, never terrible. These other two we don't want. The the Forbidden Tomb and then the uh, the Bouncing Blades. I could see taking a re-roll re here. Memory game's kind of interesting in this because our cards are all so cheap. Uh, it gives us a lot of extra stuff to just put onto the board. I think that's okay. What's this? We got some kind of epic thing down here. It says Poros on it. Nothing wrong with the Poros encounter, right? <laughs> and so let's head that way. And so round start, create a knock him down in the foe's hand. I don't I think that Poros encounter might be a new one. We'll have to I'll have to check the site after after the game and see if uh, if we've collected that one yet. Well, let's see. You can hang on to Annie, hang on to keeper of the box. Uh, Annie's again not the idealist uh, champion to be putting the equipments onto since she has a little bit of trouble striking but i think she's still good enough in the early game especially for this like right here where we didn't manage to pick up an equipment then she's still just good i guess she's good at good at popping a spell shield on a plunder poro and calling it a day So we'll play Keeper of the Box, and we'll get a fresh Keeper of the Box next turn. If we picked up a one-cost equipment, that would be pretty ideal. Oof, perfect. We'll have to wait on that equipment. It's a, it's a little too scary with his opportunity to, uh, to knock him down for, for three... So he's already got the the full damage he needs to kill our units. So let's take the powder kegs out of the way. Then we can follow up with the ballista. 
Now we get to draw a fresh Ballista. Only the freshest of Ballistas on our channel. You're welcome, you know? <laughs> I don't I don't know how well other people are watching out for you, but I'm here de delivering the, fl the fresh Ballistas, which I hope you can appreciate. Alright, then again, we want to play this Darken Ballista as our last one. I want to get a unit equipped next turn, then getting it equipped for f uh, the cheaper item is, is kind of ideal. Still a little short on the lethals. Can't get all Aatrox on the board. Stuff's about to get real cheap, though. I give, I give it that. I give it that. No, oh, no, we could. We wouldn't have lethaled this turn. Uh, I, I forgot that Annie has the support attached to her. It's not really worthwhile on Geral, but you know, you know what they say. Eh, whatever. <laughs> Take it very, very serious. Yeah, whatever. All right, Aatrox on board. Ready to drop in some, some Deathbringer sweeps. Mm. Let's not. Let's let's pass on that idea. We can still world ender next turn. But this would be the reason why uh, I like to put tough onto Aatrox. If you can imagine that uh, opponent's units aren't all all minus one attack, then we would be able to say. Uh, strike down two or three of the units, strike down Jack the Winner and something else uh, without our Aatrox dying. Alright, though. That should be enough. Block however you wish, my friend. See, see if you can get out of this. Neg 15 into 4. Looks like you can't. GG. Okay, hopefully we won't be drawing four more Aatrox in the next game. We got the, the full package of Aatrox. What do we got here? Regenerate on a Darken Aegis is kind of nice, but I'm going to look towards the, the Bakai here. We need to just continue on with these cheap plays. He's kind of our premier one-drop. He's even a little bit better than Annie. And then the Poros thing, you can either just buy a bunch of Poros, adopt a Poro to pay some money for, I'm sure, or fill your home with the little buddy's power. Uh, summon a random one-cost Poro. That's actually perfect for our deck, having the uh, uh, the the one-cost dude at the beginning of the turn, letting us just not need dudes. We just need equipment at the start of the game now. The other new power, we already have Neg 1 on the opponent. Why not put plus 1 on our dudes? Sounds good. The next set, a Spell's Chest or a Rekindler. The Rekindler lets you buy revives. We're never dying this game, so we'll head up to the, the chest. And so at round start, you deal one to all units, and then the foe's units get plus one health. Mm, these little these little Poros about to start doing work. And it's interesting. I, I don't know if, uh, if Riot just didn't have the proper Aatrox art, or if uh, it, it was you know, intentional, but... If you look at his uh, his champion powers, right? If you come down here to the Infernal Chains, it's got uh, the very cute and cuddly stuff on here on all of his star power strikes. And so uh, I was curious if that was intentional or if uh, you know Riot put in some kind of uh, placeholder picture and then forgot to update it as the game was released <laughs> or what they did. But, you know, big, big scary Aatrox out here is fully loaded with... Uh, Fully loaded with uh, the the very cutesy images on all of his Path of Champions stuff. All right, well, got a great board. There were no equipment in that set. We're looking to predict into an equipment. Still no more. So let's go with the keeper. We'll play the Bakai last, so that we get the the predict unit on top again next turn. Here's some equipment. Take the ballista. We're getting pretty far into this game, right? It's like it's like turn four. We don't need to be generating that spell mana anymore, so we'll put the ballista on top. And uh 
see if we can't finish off with those equips. It's like, I guess it doesn't matter a ton. I was wondering if we were going to be able to say, uh, have to like block the Trafarian and then not have a unit, but let's be real, this game's over with. Should be hitting for 15 even with a block. Death Lotus. Okay, we survive. We still get there. <laughs> it's like, fuck. Who needs to account for him doing stuff, you know? Not me. Not me. Okay, so these cards are all turds. We definitely don't want more violent discords in our deck. Let's just take a reroll, see if we can't find anything a little better. I don't know, a Grave Physician, I guess, starting with the free attacks? I mean, sure. Whatever, he's cheap. That's all we're really looking for. Don't want any of these cards, so we can just leave them all behind. And then move on to the healer. Let's cut something out. Maybe that card we just picked up. The Violent Discord can certainly go. Get rid of the Violent... Well, I could see the Violent Discord actually being useful in this match. Since since Gangplank generates the Powder Kegs every turn, this is, uh, this is its opportunity to shine. Let's go ahead and hang on to that. Just get rid of a unit. Legion Saboteur can probably go. Now that we're generating Poros every turn of the game, uh, we, we shouldn't need to uh, to keep those one drops in our deck. And so with the round start, the foe summons a Powder Keg. Then the first time the foe starts around with less than 15 health, they create the Dreadway in hand. So the 15 health is the big price point for opponent. And the Dreadway costs 6 mana in this. Dreadway doesn't cost 8 or 9, whatever it is normally. Uh, I think it costs 6 here. All right, well, here's the fun squad. I guess we can hang on to Annie. We don't just start with the Poro, right? That Poro doesn't come down on the first turn. Oh, it does. I thought it didn't do that on the last game. Oh, you live and you learn. So this will look extra good now, right? We'll get the Annie, get the, the fleeting copy of the Ballista. We'll be able to add the fresh Ballista to the board. Play it as our last card so we can just keep playing them over and over again. We need to hit the Aatrox so we can just get like five Naganikas on the board. <laughs> I think that's the that's the proper way to play any game. It's like we're just going to murder them with elusives. Alright, not a bad start. Got more elusives in hand. Just continuing to be on curve. The blooming will come in. Atunus. We can. Oh, we played Annie last. Did we mess that up? Apparently, we messed that up. That's too bad. All right, Darken Staff. Sure. We are cruising through this one. Not really worried about it. Uh oh, you got boomed, my dude. Can't replay it now. All right. It's like I guess we should have we should have played it to a degree so that we could uh, get the Aatrox cheaper. But I'm gonna be real with you. This, this game is done. This game does not matter at this point, and so not particularly worried. I'm gonna can't he's gonna draw the, the the dreadway, not be able to play it. It's too expensive, right? The the dreadway costs six. He's gonna play gangplank here, then we'll just stun him. Just like I taught you, bro. All right, as they say, R.I.P. Gangplank. Rip it, roll it, put it in your pipe, and smoke it. That one's all done. Get the big finale out here. Get the crushing blow happening. Play all of your cards, Gangplank. No one cares. And that's going to do it. GG. 
And so yeah, not a bad set of battles with our old Aatrox deck. Uh, we're getting really close to moving off of that Armadillo shell and into a rare relic, but you know, until we get there, I think we still at least hit some neat strategies here. We got to, uh, to, to kind of focus on the Poros, and we got to talk a little bit about what I think is the important part of these Aatrox matchups and uh, the balance between having enough cheap plays, having enough equipment, and then having a touch of interactivity while not loading up your deck with expensive stuff, right? So the expensive stuff that we need is all just going to come from Aatrox and the Darken. We don't need any of that, but uh, the, the cheap plays are where you have to really kind of find that balance. And so I thought it was good that we got to uh, upgrade and include more Forsaken Bakais. Picking up the Poro uh, ability was quite strong, uh, and we get to at least talk a little bit about the... Uh, the, the deck building struggles and strengths and weaknesses uh, as we are in some of the easier battles here. But nonetheless, that's going to do it. I had fun with that. I hope you did too, because that is going to do it for us today. And so hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way and had a good time watching. Well, this is Bustin. We thank you for being here.